So while they're getting my slides up, I'd like to see a show of hands. How many of you out there would allow your children or any of your relatives to play with asbestos or lead? Show me your hands. I'm not seeing anyone. I want you to remember that. All right, it's my pleasure to give you an update on contamination in skincare products, benzene, back in the news. I gave this lecture about six months ago here at this meeting, and now we're gonna talk about some updates. Uh, here are my disclosures. Most importantly, I have no financial relationship with Valisure. All right, some facts about benzene. It is a colorless or yellow liquid at room temperature, and it's produced by natural and man-made processes, naturally things like crude oil. It's known to be a hazardous industrial solvent. It's used as a solvent in chemical and pharma production. It's the starting material and intermediate in the synthesis of many chemicals. It's well known to be a contaminant within the petroleum industry, such as gasoline, uh, and it is, for that reason, broadly banned uh, in many industries. It's been known to be toxic to human health for some time. Uh, the hematotoxicity of benzene was first established or described in 1897. I don't think any of us remember that. <laughs> And it was shown to be linked to leukemia through petroleum workers and their exposure. For those of us that love to, to snorkel or scuba dive and see the colorful fish and, and reefs, uh, it's toxic to marine life at levels of parts per billion. And cigarette smoke is a major source of exposure. And the last time I checked, most places have banned smoking inside airplanes, inside buildings, restaurants, etc., because we know secondhand smoke is problematic. So what are this, what's the science behind benzene? Well, in the upper left, this article states, any concentration of benzene greater than zero is not safe. Lower left, there is probably no safe level of exposure to benzene. And on the right, it's been shown that leukemia risk increases starting around benzene exposure between 0.8 and 1.6 part per million. For simplicity, I'm going to ask you to remember one more thing, and that's 1.6 part per million as the threshold for starting to see leukemia uh, risk increase. So what do our regulatory agencies actually say about benzene? So in the upper left, the CDC, benzene causes cancer in humans. Look at the lower left, the World Health Organization. Benzene is a group one carcinogen, known human carcinogen, and it's in the same category as asbestos, formaldehyde, and lead. So you wouldn't let your children or any of your relatives play with asbestos or lead. You're gonna let them play with benzene? The Occupational Safety and Health Organization wants workers to wear protective equipment to limit uh, exposure to no more than 0.1 parts per million. And the EPA has a hard limit of 0.005 parts per million or five parts per billion in drinking water, but the goal is zero because they know that benzene can cause leukemia. So about two years ago, a bombshell broke. A company called Valisure that tests the quality of uh, agents uh, out there, drugs, other pharmaceuticals, uh, studied roughly 300 unique batches of sunscreen and after the sun care products. 78 had detectable benzene. 26 were between 0.1 parts per million and two, and 14 had benzene levels above two parts per million. And on the left, you can see this was the actual FDA citizen petition that was filed, and uh, I was part of that. On the lower right, Bloomberg News has been pretty big in covering the story, uh, and back in uh, the, the summer of 2021, uh, clearly uh, they were highlighting these concerns. Now, the findings by Valisher of benzene in sunscreen and after sun care products led to major recalls. Here's copper tone and Neutrogena, which is a Johnson & Johnson product, um, caused these to be recalled. And from there, oh, let me go back. Can you go back one slide, please? What was interesting was that Johnson & Johnson, and I give them credit for doing their own internal studies, they did internal studies, and found that the benzene in their products range from 11 to 24 parts per million. Does anyone remember the number I told you, the increased threshold, 1.6? This was two to fourfold higher than Valisher's findings, but these results were never made public. It took a Freedom of Information Act request to get these statistics. Keep that in mind. Now, why is this occurring? You cannot go to the store and look at the ingredients on your 
products, whether it's sunscreens or other, and C, benzene, because it's a contaminant. And it's a contaminant because of this complex supply chain. Many of the ingredients and manufacturing uh, precursors that go into making personal care products occur overseas or, and or there's very poor quality control regulation. Around the time the sunscreen story broke, I was quoted in, I, I guess this is Bloomberg News, saying what about the other things that we're applying? Moisturizers, skin creams, makeups, is the manufacture of these products that different than sunscreens? And where is the oversight? And then boom, what happened? Recalls of body deodorants, body sprays, right? You know, antiperspirants, uh, anti odor. And then hand sanitizers, and then antifungal sprays. The story keeps building. Here's a timeline of all of the recalls due to benzene. So this is, can be found on the Valisher website. So starting in March 24, 2021, you actually initially started with hand sanitizers because the rules for making hand sanitizers became lax during COVID. Then you can see in the yellow dots, you had around summer 2021, the sunscreens and after sun care products. Then you had other products, the antifungal uh, sprays. Then you had uh, body sprays. And then if we go to the right column, you see some purple dots. That represents the biggest breakthrough of the last few months. If you go down to the very bottom, November, October, November 2022, dry aerosolized shampoos. How many people here use dry shampoos? Show me the hands. Okay, maybe 40 to 50% here. I think the rest are not admitting it. So here's what happened. In October 2022, Valisher submitted another citizen petition to the FDA on dry aerosolized shampoo products. They tested 148 batches of 34 unique brands. Three lots from one brand had over 100 parts per million benzene. 11 lots from three brands, over 20 parts per million benzene. 18 lots, 10 brands between two and 20. So all of what I just said was above that 1.6 threshold. And then there are some others. But notably, notice this, 23 brands had no benzene. This is very similar to the sunscreen study where there were definitely sunscreens that did not have benzene because it's a contamination process. And so let me be very clear, Valisher, nor me, nor anyone else, no one is saying don't use sunscreens. We know sunscreens protect against skin cancer. We want sunscreens. This is a quality control question. Do we want our patients, ourselves, using products that have a well-known human carcinogen the same level as lead or asbestos? And just to prove it, here's my sunscreen. I use sunscreen. So, and I'm gonna leave it right there, brand backwards, so I'm unbiased, okay? I use sunscreen. I want sunscreen, but I want it safe. So. In the bottom left, you can see all the recalled brands of dry aerosolized shampoo products. As you can clearly tell, I miss show and tell from kindergarten. But in uh, the right, are, here are the key findings that I want you to take away from the dry aerosolized shampoo. Detected variability between sprays. So what Valisher found was there's inconsistent product composition in these sprays. The final sprays had higher particulate matter than early sprays. So just forget the benzene, Just the way aerosolized products work isn't uniform, it's heterogeneous. Secondly, high benzene levels were detected directly from the air. So what was unique about this study compared to sunscreen and the other uh, product recalls was that they used a selected ion flow tube mass spectrometry technique to actually look at benzene in the air of a 550 cubic foot room. Why 550 cubic feet? It's about the size of a large bathroom, okay? The short term, which is within you know, roughly the first 10 seconds or so, short term benzene levels reached 1600 parts per billion. The long term benzene levels reached 36 parts per billion. So long term in this case means 15 minutes. How many of you spend at least 15 minutes in your bathroom getting ready in the morning? Now, this 36 parts per billion is 90 fold higher then the EPA threshold for increased cancer risk due to inhalation of benzene. So let's think about that. The EPA states that lifetime exposure to 0.4 parts per billion benzene in the air will lead to one additional cancer case per 100,000 exposed persons. 
and dry air slice shampoos range between 36 to 1600 parts per billion. Let that soak in. A lot of uh, critics of the, the benzene saying, ah, it doesn't matter, say, well, it's in the air, it's everywhere around us. Well, let's take a look at the actual science. So benzene in the air, assuming you're not breathing secondhand smoke, but benzene in the air, the actual rate is around 0 0.0003 parts per million. That means antiperspirants that were detected in these studies had 60,000 fold higher benzene than in ambient air. Hand sanitizers, 50,000 higher. Sunscreen, 20,000 fold higher. The dry shampoos, between 5,300 times in the short term to 120 times in the long term. So what does this all mean? If we look here, the FDA says very clearly that solvents that are class one, which in the left, benzene is a class one solvent, they should not be employed in the manufacture of drug substances, excipients, or drug products because of their unacceptable toxicity. But there's a caveat. If their use is unavoidable in order to produce a drug product that has a significant therapeutic advance, then their levels should be restricted as in table one, which is two parts per million. But there's two problems here. First of all, we can make sunscreens and all these products without benzene. So absolutely, it can be done without it. So you can't use that as an excuse. Number two, is it a significant therapeutic advance to have benzene in there? No, so you can't do that. And then number three, how many of these tests are showing higher than two, two parts per million? So none of it makes sense. It shouldn't be there. So let me leave you with my last slide. On the far left, for any of you those from Michigan, your congresswomen are doing great. So congresswomen from the state of Michigan have filed a letter here, you can read it online in detail, have written a letter to the FDA saying, what are you doing? What are you going to do about benzene contamination? And on the right is the latest breaking news from Bloomberg News two days ago, Anna Edney wrote an article, dry shampoo safety remains a frustrating mystery. I'm not gonna tell you the story. I'm gonna ask all of you to go to Bloomberg News and read Anna's story, because ultimately what it shows is a lack of transparency and honesty with the public. And I think all of us in dermatology, we want safe products for ourselves and our patients. And I think we as Americans deserve quality control. It can be done. Products exist without benzene. Let's make all of them exist without benzene. Thank you.